Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. It's wonderful to welcome you all here to this Mass here in St Mary's Cannock. Some of you watching from some distance. Uh, some of you very close indeed. The doors are closed and locked, I'm sorry to say. And I look at their pews in front of me, but I know behind the camera, which I'm looking at now, you're there. And uh, as I walked up to the altar then, it said 67 on the screen. You perhaps have a better idea from where you're viewing from. So lots of us are here together joining in this Mass. It's a strange experience though. How can you have Palm Sunday without palms? How can we have Holy Week with our churches closed? How will we be able to celebrate Easter without receiving the body and blood of Christ? But we are. And we know there's good reason why we're doing things in these ways, however much it may pain us and sadden us. In a sense, this week we share something of the pain and suffering of Christ who came to give his life for us so that we might share in his glory. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Now I'm here on my own but at least 15 different people have contributed to the celebration of Mass now. And one of the ways in which they've contributed is by taking part and reading our readings from Scripture. So we now have our first reading, which is read by Javier Gonzalez Fritz. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's heart, so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
A reading from the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld, should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. We come now to the reading of the Passion. Uh, I'm really grateful to those who've helped to put this together. I should emphasise not only are these persons not in this church at the moment, uh, but they weren't together when this was uh, recorded. So I'm very grateful for their contributions. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus was born before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor put him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner to the people, anyone they chose. Now, there was at the time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So, when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now, as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand to release a Barabbas and execute Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, but in that case, what am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? I all said, Let him be crucified! Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? They shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified! Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, If it was the other, the man I killed you. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to the crew to be crucified. The Roman soldiers took Jesus with them into the Praetorium and collect the whole cohort around him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet coat and had him twisted some thorns into a crown. They put this on his head and placed a reed in his hand to make fun of him. They knelt to him saying, Hey, take the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And um, when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to be crucified. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene 
Simon by name, and an enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golagotha, this that is the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothes by casting lots and then sat down and stayed there keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed a, a charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And at the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So he would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priest, with the scribes and elders, mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, The man is falling down Elijah! And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait! See the one who was supposed to it! But Jesus again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we'll move on to the creed in just a moment. I'm not going to preach a long homily today, um, just a reflection really. Uh, one of the things I enjoy, many of you perhaps do, are detective stories, murder mysteries, thrillers. And the thing about those stories, they're great stories, wonderfully told, but it's the suspense that keeps us going. Sometimes they're hard to read a second time, unless they're particularly well writ written, because you know who the murderer is, you know how the crime was completed, you know how the, the uh, protagonist, the hero, gets out at the end. Holy Week isn't like that. We come together and hear this extraordinary story. The story of Jesus' arrest, of his crucifixion and his death. And we listen to this story because we know how it concludes it's not a mystery to us in that sense of mystery it's not a story where we're waiting for a cliffhanger it's certainly moving it's certainly compelling it's the greatest story ever told as the filmmakers said but we know what happens in the end we have a hope and a trust in God who despite suffering and pain and anguish and sorrow holds out a hope for us. Our churches are filled with crosses. We don't see the palm crosses today, but we certainly see the cross behind me there. You can see most of it on the screen. And around the churches I look around, I can see the stations of the cross. 
the consecration crosses, and of course many other crosses here. Usually we'd have them veiled, uh, but I can't climb a ladder to get up to that one. And, uh, well, it's a lot of work which somebody else usually does for me. I'm basically idle, I suppose, and don't like exerting myself to re reach out. We cover the crosses in order to realise their importance to us. And some churches, would, indeed, will have their crosses veiled. We stand in Holy Week, not sorrowing only, but also hoping. And this Holy Week, perhaps more than any other, we know what that means. There will be much suffering, much sorrow, much grief this week and in the weeks to come and already has been. There will be the pain of loss, the anguish of the mother as she stood at the foot of the cross and the anguish of the mother as she held her crucified child in her arms. That pain which Mary shares with us is one which sadly so many have and will and do experience it's a very difficult time and our faith shows us this sorrow presents it to us in order to give us a hope hope doesn't come to in a sense make no nonsense of the pain hope comes to give us comfort and strength beyond it as we turn to the cross this week as we remember our Lord's suffering for us, we pray too that we all may know his comfort, his strength, his resilience, his hope. We see it already in the courage of those who care, in the generosity of those who help. We see it in the prayers of those who pray for us. Let's trust in God, put our hope in his mercy and pray that we may share in his glory. And of course praying is something we need to do. Before we do that, we'll say together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Usually bidding prayers are a very formal thing and but so many people have sent... Uh, petitions to me uh, through our WhatsApp group and, and uh, through emails and so on. Then I want to share these with you. You can see I've got three, three pages of them here. Uh, and we, we remember all these people. Um, and there's more detail, obviously, in the messages. But some people we pray for. Let's begin with thanksgivings. Great thanks for birthdays. Winifred Haynes is 95 today. And a few days ago, another parishioner. Uh, grandson of a parishioner, Hugo, was five. Remember both of those. Also, birthdays in my own family. There are the two birthdays today. Our daughter, Nicola, and uh, great-granddaughter, Aria. And, uh, and so we give thanks for all those very blessings. Nicola's wedding anniversary, too. We pray, though, also, of course, for those who are sick, those who care for them. Uh, let's pray first for those in healthcare and social care who are putting their lives at great risk in order to help others, in particular from our community, Joe, who's a frontline surgeon, Mark, who's a paramedic, and uh, many others, of course. We pray for those who are sick at this time, some with the virus and some with other matters. Jared Gallagher, who is uh, getting much better after being rushed into hospital, this is in Ireland, and is very grateful to the, the healthcare services there. Ruth, who has the virus. Trisha and Stephen, who've been recently diagnosed with cancer. They're awaiting surgery. Of course, the wait is most very difficult at this time. For Jane, who had an operation in the past week. Doreen, a lady of 88, who had a fall, broke a hip. She's very grateful for our prayers. She sent a message to say so. But of course, time, things are very difficult uh, after it, well, in hospital and not being able to receive visitors. We pray for Bill, parishioner here 
who's, I believe, still in hospital. He's very, been quite poorly. Michael, who's been poorly with the virus and is recovering, but it's slow recovery. And also for so many others, Sandra, who's waiting for an operation. Glyn Costigan, who's also sick. Gordon June Weatherby, who's not in the best of health. Brian, who's recovering from a stroke. Les, an 80-year-old who fell downstairs and has both broken bones. Mabel, neighbour of a parishioner who's had a stroke. We remember all those in our prayers and uh, ask God's blessing and help and comfort upon them. And we pray also for those who've passed from this life. We remember particularly Irene Thomas, who died on the 3rd of April at West Park Hospital. Noel Sweeney, well-known man locally, who died on the 1st of April. And also others connected with our parish community in various ways. Tony Soden, Teresa Donlan, Doreen Curley, and Pete, a local man. Not a member of our congregation, but known by members of the congregation here. All of these are taken up into our prayers. And we bring these prayers to our Immaculate Mother, who always prays for us and shows her great compassion, as she did to her son. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, William and David, his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Patrick and Agnes Brown, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas More, with Blessed John Sugar and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And seeing as the bells just stop ringing, it seems a very appropriate moment to greet one another in the peace of Christ. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ from me to everlasting life. The communion antiphon. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done.
invite you now to make your own act of spiritual communion and I will lead you in this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. Before our final prayers, just uh, one or two particular thank yous to say. Um, I'm very grateful for those who took part in the Mass at a distance and all separately as well, apart from a group, small group of children. Um, Chris, Karen, Javier, Claire, Callum, who's an altar server here, who and, and a pupil at uh, Cardinal Griffin School, student there. Uh, Joe, the Liturgy and Worship Group from Cardinal Griffin, don't know all their names, there's quite a few of them. Uh, also, uh, several of uh, our grandchildren, um, I think it was Molly, Millie, Joseph, and possibly Martha as well, who were on the your voices you could hear playing the parts of the crowd. Um, I'm very grateful to those who took part in the Passion. Uh, Callum, who was asked at very short notice to do this, and so was Claire for that matter, who provided the other voices. And, uh, and it's great to think that, oh, I'm here, and this church is apparently empty. Besides the saints and the angels being here and all the heavenly hosts, you're watching and some of you are able to contribute to this. And last week we had a, a video of parish people and there's been a few more photos and some key workers we've been able to add to that who are connected with our parish. So that's going to be shown uh, almost at the end after the blessing. So have a good Holy Week. Enjoy the sunshine, but of course stay at home. And if you've got a garden, you lucky people... Uh, you can sit out in the garden and if you haven't well perhaps open the window and take in some fresh air but don't go out we know it's for our safety and the safety of others uh, hard and difficult and trying though that may be let us pray nourished with these sacred gifts we humbly beseech you O lord that just as through the death of your son you have brought us hope for what we believe so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes.